Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances at your lotus feet, Maharaj. All glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to all our Gramajas. Maharaj, whenever you're ready, you may take the call over. Today we are going to study from Canto 6, Chapter 7, verse number 25. Whenever you're ready, Maharaj. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Advishwarupam Bhajata Suvipram Tapasvinam Tastram Matamavantam Abhojitartan savidasya tevo yadi kavishya dhvam mutasya karma. Translation O demigods, I instructed you to approach Vishwaru, the son of Tvasta, and accept him as your guru. He is pure and very powerful Brahma undergoing austerities and penances. Please, by your worship, he will fulfill your desires, provided that you tolerate his being inclined to side with the demons. Hmm. Purport. Lord Ram advised the demigods to accept the son of Twasta as their spiritual master, although he was always inclined towards the benefit of the asuras. Continue on. Hare Krishna. 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 Namaste, Sarasvati Deva, Gauda Vani Pacharine. Here is a Sunyavari, Pastyatyare, Saturni Vanchakopa, through this chap. Kripa Sindhu Peva Chapadita, Ram Pavane Bio, Vaishnava Bio, Namaho Namaha. I see Krishna Chaitanya. Prabhu Nityananda, Siyadvaita Gadadhar, Sivasari Gaur, Bhakta Rindam. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Rama, Rama, Hare Hare. So the demigods are approaching Lord Brahma for assistance. Brahma is pointing the way to Vishwarup. Vishwarup had three heads. His son was Vasta. And uh, he is a pure and powerful Brahma. So they wanted to uh, produce Um, I'm not sure of the storyline right now, but the demon, the demigods needed help. And so Tuasta was assigned as their spiritual master. Um, and the demigods went along with it and approached Tuasta. Oh, the son of Tuasta, Vishwarup, yeah. And uh, so they needed a yagya performed. And so they approached him. I think we should go on to the next verse because I need some more storyline here before I can actually speak here. Sri Sukhavacha, 
Sahiva Muditam Rajan Brahmanam Vigata Dwaraha Rishim Tvastram Mupa Rajya Pariswe Dhyay Dham Abhuvan Srila Sukadeva Goswami continued thus advised by Lord Brahma, relieved of the anxiety, all the demigods went to the sage Vishwarup, the son of Tvasta. My dear king, they embraced him and spoke as follows. <coughs> Sri Deva Uchu Vayam Te Titiya Prapta Asramam Badram Astute Kama Sampadyate Tata Prittinam Samayo Chitaha. Demigod said, Beloved Vishru, may there be all good fortune for you. We, the demigods, have come to your ashram as a guest. Please try to fulfill our desires according to the time, since we are on the level of your parents. Putranam hiparo dharmam prittisusru sanam satam api putra vatam brahmam kim uta brahmacharyanam. O Brahman, the highest duty of a son, even though he has sons of his own, <coughs> is to serve his parents. And what to speak of a son who is a brahmacharya? Acharya Brahmano Mortim Pitra Mortim Prajapate Bharata Marupatir Mortir Matasaksa Shite Stanahu Dayaya Bhaginam Mortim Dharma Yas Matiti Swayam Agnir Avya Gato Mortim Sarva Bhutani Chatmanaha Translation the Acharya, the spiritual master who teaches all the Vedic knowledge and gives initiation by offering the sacred thread, is the personification of the Vedas. Then may a father personify for Brahma, a brother, King Indra, a mother of the planet of Earth, and a sister, Mercy. A guest personifies religious principles, and invited guest personifies the demigod Agni. And all living entities personified Lord Vishnu, Supreme Personality of Godhead, <clears throat> purport. According to the moral instructions of Chanika Pandit, Atmavam Sarvabhute Shu, one should observe all living entities to be on the same level as oneself. This means that no one should be neglected as inferior because Paramatma is seated in everyone's heart. Everyone should be respected as the temple of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. This verse describes different ways in which one should respect the guru, father, brother, sister, and guest, and so on. Umagyan timirandasya gina jina salakaya chaksun melitam yena tasmai shri gurudeva maha. So this verse here, mm, mm indicates a very important point that Krishna makes in the Bhagavad Gita. Now, thus, when you learn the truth, you know that all living beings are my parts and parcels that are in me and their mind. All living entities are spiritual by nature, and each one is connected to the Supreme Lord in loving devotion and service. There are two levels of existence, the spiritual realm and the material world. In the spiritual realm, all living entities are fully situated in their position as loving servants to the Lord. They worship the Lord constantly, and they derive great happiness and satisfaction being with the Lord and serving the Lord in different ways. This is the... Uh, this is the eternal home of all living entities. But there are a class of living entities who leave the spiritual world, who come to the material world. These living entities um, fall from their position and take up the idea of trying to enjoy the external energy of the Lord. The external energy of the Lord is situated by the arrangement of the Lord to give the rebellious living entities a chance to try to enjoy separate from the Lord. 
the enjoying propensity is indigenous or innate in all living beings. So all living beings have a tendency to want to enjoy. But in order to enjoy, one has to be in a position of able to control. So the living entities fall from the material or spiritual world into the material world, and they uh, work on various ways to control and to enjoy. The enjoyment is the actual goal of life. Mm -hmm. We all know that simply by our nature, everyone wants happiness, everyone is looking for pleasure, everyone lives according to bringing these things about in terms of direct or indirect forms of pleasure. And so in that struggle, which is, uh, which is um, uh, outside of the uh, service of the Lord, one lives a life of constant struggle. And in that struggle, everyone is trying to outdo the other person in order to take use of the material energy, which is the property of the Lord. Krishna says, Maya Dakshayna Prakriti, Suyate Sachara Charam Hetu Nanandi Kunte Avijari, Gadvi Paravi Partante. The material energy works under my direction, producing all moving and non-moving living beings. By its by by its will, it, it it creates and annihilates again and again. So the material energy is very powerful, as it says here. The planet Earth is an an expression of uh, one's mother. So a mother is a person who is um, providing for their children. So planet Earth is a place where the living entities can get what they need in order to live, as long as they follow the, the orders of the father. If they follow the orders of the father, then mother provides everything they need. What is the orders of the father? They have to realize that as spiritual beings, they're in, 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 an, in a foreign environment, and to try to take advantage of that foreign environment to try to enjoy means to go against one's actual nature and against the laws of God. So in order to bring back these uh, deviant living entities, the Lord arranges for the material energy to punish them when they uh, break the laws of the material uh, of the material energy and act against the laws of God. Therefore, the process of religion, which is to follow the instructions of God. Religion simply means to follow the instructions of the Lord. Those who follow the instructions of the Lord are considered to be religious. Those who break them are considered to be irreligious. And Mother Earth is the provider. She gives and she withholds according to the quality of the living entities activities in this material world. When they obey the Father, then their life is happy and material energy provides what they need. And when they break the law, they find themselves in scarcity and in difficulty and are being um, uh, punished by that same energy that can provide for them. So material energy is both the punisher and the provider, and she is the instrument of God's will for the living entities in the material world. So one who takes up devotional service is actually the most intelligent person, and therefore they automatically abide by the laws of God, and gradually they elevate themselves back towards the spiritual well. And when that becomes their full activities, they reach perfection, and then they return to the spiritual world. So here, all living entities are, 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 should be seen as the same. In other words, in every species of life, there are living beings. There are birds, there are insects, aquatics, trees, plants, various types of uh, uh, animals, and of course, the human species. Uh, the scriptures give an exact number, 8,400,000 species of life, and each one of them is a spiritual being with a particular type of body. The consciousness of the living entity is the same, but it's covered by a type of body. So the more 
grosser the covering, the less the consciousness, the less awareness of the consciousness. Just like a tree, a tree can, uh, can also breathe and it can also uh, react to light and heat. So, uh, but it's not like a human being. They don't feel the light and heat as the human beings do because the consciousness is covered. So as you go up the evolutionary scale, starting with the lowest of forms of life, aquatics, then to the insects, creepers, trees, plants, and then into the birds, and then and then into the beasts, um, you find there's, that there's a gradation of uncovering of the natural spiritual consciousness. But only in the human species of life is there a uh, consciousness of discrimination. In other words, in all of the 8,400,000 species of life, the 8 million cannot become God conscious because they have no reasoning power and no ability to discriminate. And they can't be taught their constitutional position because they are covered by these what we so very gross forms of life. But when one reaches the human form of life, then that's the beginning of one's opportunity to make a solution to all problems in life. And that human form of life, as you see, both in numbers and in uh, attainment, is it considered to be the rare form of life. In other words, there are in proportion to all of the other kinds of living entities in different bodies, the humans are the smallest in number. So to get a human body, we, we consider it to be quite rare. And one who achieves the human form of life is fortunate because at that time, they can regain their, their position in the spiritual world through the process of bhakti yoga. But we see very few people take up the human form, take up the process of bhakti in the human form of life. And those who do take it up, very few actually reach perfection. As Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Manusyanam Sahasreshu, Kaschit Yatadi Siddhaya, Yatatam Abhisidhanam, Kaschit Mam Veti Tatpadaha. And that out of thousands who take up spiritual life, very few actually achieve perfection. And those who have achieved perfection, only uh, hardly one knows me in truth. So it's very difficult to get back to the spiritual world. But if one follows the process very carefully, and uh, and adheres to the instructions of the spiritual master. Here we're seeing how um, the demigods needed a uh, a guide. So Lord Brahma gave them a guide according to the need, and that was uh, Vishwaru. But he wasn't a perfect guide in the sense that he had three heads. One, he would serve the demons with. One, he would serve the devotees with. And the other one, he would uh, perform some sacrifice with. So, um, but Brahma gave them uh, because they needed a spiritual master for to perform a, a yagya. And he was the most qualified person available. So Brahma gave them. But he said he's inclined to the demons. So they didn't get a perfect spiritual master, but one if one wants to go back home, back to Godhead, one can not one has to accept Krishna's representative who comes into Siplic succession, who knows the science of spirituality, can teach the science of spirituality, and is an example by their own life of what real spirituality is. Such a person is called a bona fide spiritual master. One who meets the spiritual master and takes advantage of that meeting by accepting the shelter of the spiritual master is considered to be very, very fortunate and very rare. Because the, the elements of material energy are so powerful that they cover the living entity in so many different ways and make them forget. This, this forgetfulness is called maya. Maya means what is not 
or what appears to be something, but is not what it appears to be. Just like uh, you, know, a, you might see a glove from a distance and you might think it's a hand because you're looking at it from a distance, you think it's a hand, but when you get close, you realize it's not, it's just the covering of a hand. So we can't act as a hand, but it looks like a hand. So Maya looks like uh, something that can give pleasure to the living entities, but it cannot. You know? And so um, Maya is there to trick and to trap the living entities to continue their deviant activities in the material world and punish them at the same time for, that, for those activities. Therefore, Maya is the agent of punishment when one tries to enjoy because no one can enjoy the property of the Supreme Lord. The material world is the Lord's property. He says, Maya Dakshina Prakritis, this, this energy is my energy. So the Lord lets us use his material energy to live. And if we take our quota according to what we need, that is fine. But to live a life outside of devotion to the Lord means to unnecessarily struggle and to become defeated eventually and then at the time of death one has to again rotate in the cycle of birth and death take another birth sometimes that birth is a lower species and again uh, take birth and go through the whole process again and if one loses the chance of the human fire of form of life it may take millions of years for that soul to get back to the human form of life so coming to the material world is not a very good program. <laughs> Here we are in this material world. So the process of getting out is available. And that is made easy in this age by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He made the process easier. Krishna said the surrender. Lord Chaitanya didn't talk about surrender. He talked about Chant, dance, take prasadam, read nice books, associate with people who are doing the same thing, worship the Lord in the temple, and uh, gradually make your life perfect. Eat food that has been offered to the Lord, which is called prasadam. Prasadam means the mercy of the Lord, which elevates one's consciousness to the level of spiritual life. So this process is there. So um, very few actually make it back to Godhead in this life. But those who persevere uh, can finish up in one life. And those who seriously take it up and fall short may be able to do it in two or three lives. But the point is to get out of this material world because it's not our home. It's just a place of illusion. It's a place of suffering, place of unnecessary activities and struggle. Mm -hmm. Something popped up here in the corner. Okay. So, uh, yeah. So the demigods are beings on a higher realm of we are. They are they are the universal controllers. There are thirty three million demigods, and they're all grihastas. Therefore, there's thirty three million demigoddesses also. Um, they live in the realms called Swargaloka, which is in the higher planetary system. Their duration of life, their bodily features, their uh, freedom from suffering is much greater than on this material level. The material realm is of three levels. There's the lower planetary systems, the middle planetary systems, and the higher planetary which includes 14 planetary systems, making up three realms of existence. We are living on the earth planet. We are in the middle planetary systems where there is so supposed to be a balance of happiness and distress in the material sense. Uh, higher planetary systems have more happiness. Lower planetary systems have more suffering. So um, the demigods, they have a very important service. Many of them are instruments for the Lord's manifestations of what the, the living entities need. So there's a demigod of rain, which is Indra, demigod of wind, which is Vayu, demigod of the ocean, Samudra, 
um, demigod of uh, um, so many different types of demigods. And, and we also heard about Brihaspati, who is the uh, guru of the demigods. So they have their whole arrangement there. And here they, and now you see that even if one me, goes to the higher realms and attains to the demigods level of, of material existence, still there is problems. Still there is problems. As Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, from the highest planet down to the lowest, all are places of misery wherein birth and death take place. So Krishna warns that don't try to stay in any level of the existence. There are there are people who practice spiritual life for elevation to a better material situation. They worship the devas in order to get that position. And if they're successful, they may get it. But shinya punya martya loke, which means that after some time, because it's more like money in the bank, or it's more like money on hand. When you have money, you spend it. When you spend it, it's gone. So attaining to the heavenly planets is temporary. And one will again have to fall down into the lower levels, sometimes into the lower planets, sometimes into the middle planet. Again, to struggle with the material energy in order to survive. So although it is an elevated existence, it is not perfection. And you see here the demigods are in trouble. They go to Brahma for some help. And he guides them to a person who is not exactly uh, what they're looking for. And you'll see as the story unfolds what happens in the future and the demigods get in bigger trouble. <laughs> and bigger trouble. And then, of course... Uh, uh, you'll go on to the story of Vitrasura. Uh, Vitrasura actually becomes uh, the results of the demigods offending their spiritual master, Vishnu. And you'll see that as it comes up. Because they are not, he's not inclined. He's also inclined to the demigods. And the demigods took action against him and killed him. And because of that, Twasta performed a, uh, a sacrifice to get a demon to kill Indra. And that, that story will unfold in this sixth canto, which is the essence of the sixth canto, the story of Ritasura. So in these stories, in these pastimes here, they're actual historical events. You see that even demigod life is full of difficulties, even though it is... Uh, a higher level. They always have to deal with attacks from the demons and other problems also. So therefore, Krishna says, you know, go back home, back to Godhead. If you want to be free from all suffering and enjoy life as it's meant to be enjoyed, then one should go to that realm, which is which is the nature of one's existence. We are spiritual. We cannot live in the material world and expect to be happy as a fish cannot live on the land. You take a fish on the land, you, you give it a, a fish castle, you give it fish clothes, you give it a fish car, fish computer, you give it everything that uh, the humans have, the fish will simply die because it's out of environment. So we are out of our environment, therefore, in due course of time, we have to leave this environment. In the meantime, we're struggling to somehow or other find some little bit of happiness here. And uh, so it goes on. But one who takes up devotional service, that is the pathway back. And so what is that taking up the devotional service is to take shelter seriously of the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari. This is the most important aspect of devotional practice, and it brings the highest form of consciousness, frees one from all material suffering, and it connects one with the Supreme Personality of Godhead in devotion. 
This chanting is very simple, but it has to be practiced very seriously in order to get the results. So if we chant the holy names of the Lord regularly with attention, uh, free from distraction, and with devotion as much as we can acquiesce, then, and of course, eat only food offered to the Lord in devotion, Krishna Prashad, which purifies the mind and, uh, and elevates the soul. And uh, associate with people who are doing the same thing, that is the, the society of devotees, and perform the activities that are available. And, and then life actually becomes spiritual even while we're in this material body. One can enjoy spiritual happiness even while one is living in the material world. Of course, that happiness is not as full as one can experience if they were to achieve the spiritual realm, but it is a happiness that is natural and it's in line with our nature and it frees one from all material suffering. So the devotees of the Lord are in the best position to uh, to overcome all of the problems in the world and to make a solution. So uh, if one practices seriously, and we emphasize that ser seriously means regularly, a devotional service is something that cannot be done intermittently. It has to be done as a regular feature of one's day, day to day. Uh, because it is the nature of the soul. And as you practice devotional service, the qualities and characteristics of a spiritual person starts to manifest because they already exist within the soul and they actually become part of one's external character. And as that develops, one starts to receive more and more opportunities for devotional uh, advancement. In other words, one will make quick advancement as their characteristics, their spiritual characteristics start to manifest, which is already there, but hidden by the coverings of the material body. So chant the holy names of the Lord uh, and worship the Lord by, by, by taking shelter of his representative, the Bodhavite spiritual master. As it says here, he is like the father. The spiritual master is the father of all of the living entities. He gives connection to the Vedic knowledge. That knowledge is the personification of, uh, of the uh, advancement that we need. Without knowledge, we can't understand who we are, what we're supposed to do, and how we're supposed to do it. And where, what is the benefit of following that knowledge? So one should learn from guru and from scripture the process of transcendental knowledge, apply that knowledge under the guidance of the spiritual master and make progress back home, back to Godhead. It's a very simple but a very direct process and requires full attention. That's the, that's the underlining principle. If we don't give it full attention, it becomes very hard to actually come up to the spiritual platform where we can free ourselves from all material suffering. Okay, we'll stop there. Thank you, Maharaj, for your such inspirational class. I mean, as you as you very rightly said, that we have to be serious, and by serious, it doesn't mean intermittent. It means regular, every day. Talking about myself, Maharaj, that's so important. And this is such a simple step. And as you said, by following this regularly and doing this every day without fail, our spiritual aspect will definitely manifest here. And hopefully we'll be able to take a direct path. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances at your lotus feet. Devotees, feel free to unmute yourself. Feel free to turn your camera on so Maharaj can see whom he's talking to. Feel free to go ahead and pose your question or just raise your hand, whatever suits you. Maharaj, one quick question. So all the, the demigods, we understand that um, 
they are in this heavenly planet, but they are also doing some spiritual practices there, right? So they can also elevate themselves from, from that Swargalok, or will they have to come into this material world to do some um, Because there is too much material enjoyment there, it's hard for them to practice spiritual life. They get enamored by that. And so therefore, Srila Prabhupada would say many of the children that are born in our movement are coming from the higher planets because those children are the ones that uh, understand uh, that this Krishna conscious movement is the, is the best way to go back home, back to Godhead because it's been ordained by Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu directly. So yeah, too much happiness, too little happiness are both different. Uh, Difficult situations to practice. If one is too much in the suffering condition, they can't focus on spiritual life. If they have too much material enjoyment, then they get enamored by that and cannot take spiritual life seriously. So there should be a balance. Yes, Maharaj. Thank you very much indeed. Indu Lekha Mataji, would you like to go ahead and ask your question? Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada uh, and all glories to Your Holiness, Maharaj. Uh, thank you so much. Can you hear me, Mataji? Is this clear now? Okay. Okay. Uh, Hare, Krishna, Ma Hare Krishna, Maharaj. My question was about uh, um, uh, Diksha Gurus and Shiksha Gurus, Maharaj. Uh, as devotees, do we need to also always have to have a Shiksha Guru? or just the Diksha Gurus? Well, Diksha is enough, but Shiksha is in, it's just like if you have a, if you have a, 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 a good friend, mm. and that good friend also has another friend. So in other words, the more you get, the, the more help you can get in your spiritual practice, the more opportunities you have for spiritual advancement. So a shiksha guru is someone who patterns your diksha guru and gives you also relevant instructions when the diksha guru is either not available or when the diksha guru has left the planet, then we can also, one should find um, someone who we can also take shelter who is of the same mood as my diksha guru. So shiksha and diksha as it says in the scriptures, are both equal manifestations of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. But they have different... Uh, so, usually, Diksha gives Shiksha also. Shiksha means instructions. Diksha means the initiation process that connects one to the Parampara. And Shiksha means instructions. So, added instructions can be obtained from another personality who is a support of your Diksha Guru. So it is a, it's intelligent to see where I can gain instructions, not only from my spiritual master, but from other areas. But we have to make sure that those instructions are not contrary and at the same time supportive of our Diksha Guru. So uh, we have our, line of disciplic succession and it's a shiksha line you'll find you know bhakti vinota of course uh, uh, spiritual master uh, wa was not uh, Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj but he took instructions from Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj um, Gork, uh, Gorky Shur Das Babaji Maharaj's uh, Diksha Guru was in Bhakti Vinod Thakur. So the, our line is pretty much Chiksha. Chiksha means in the line, it means that devotee who was prominent at time giving transcendental knowledge. So why not take the help if it's available? It's not mandatory, but it's intelligent to get help from all sources in order to support and to, uh, you know, 
help us to make more and more advancement. So much, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maharaj, thank you so much, Hare Krishna. Yeah, you see, in, in the family, you have your father, but then you also have your big brother who can also help you. <laughs> yes, Maharaj. Ma like, we have Diksha Guru, we have Shiksha Guru, we have other mentors. So, how do we balance all of them and do we need all of them? At this point, I, do, I just have a Diksha Guru. And he is my Shiksha Guru too. So, uh, well, if you're if you're if you're getting everything you need and you're satisfied with that, that's fine. It's not that you have to take a Shiksha, but, but for, many, for many people they need it. Because today you were saying we need to make sure that it is we are regular in our practice and our day to day practice also. So, uh, someone who can make sure of that definitely the diksha guru doesn't have time for that it's difficult to oh, yeah. yeah and that's one of the reasons and, but sometimes when you hear the same instructions coming from a uh, from a different perspective or a different person you learn that you learn the original instructions more clear spiritual master will say something and then this, the, the Shiksha Guru will also say something similar. And those similar instructions might be more clearer than what your Diksha Guru gave. So it happens in many times like that. But if you're satisfied as you say you are, then you know, then you're that's fine. You don't have to, it's not necessary to take Shiksha unless you unless there's a need, need to. Okay, Hare Krishna. Bhagavati Harini Devi Dasi Mataji is saying, Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances at your divine lotus feet. Thank you for very much for your valuable nectarian words, Maharaj. Please bless me for spiritual progress. Please bless everybody, Maharaj. <laughs> we are begging for your wonderful blessings. Blessing is uh, the holy name. Absolutely. Chant the holy name with enthusiasm, with attention, with, regula with regularity. Understand that all the mercy that is available is found in the holy name. But we have to practice chanting the holy name in order to perfect the chanting. It's not so easy to perfect it, but if we if we stay fixed in chanting of the holy name, everything will become more and more clear. And we'll get more and more empowerment to carry out our devotional service. one quick question and devotees is there any questions from your side if not i will go ahead with my question just quickly Maharaj, one quick question so um you know when we chant hari krishna hari krishna 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 hari 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 ram hari ram 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 hari so of course um Prabhupada has given us the meaning of hari hara krishna ram now i was hearing in another lecture from i think it's from amarendra Prabhuji. he was saying that Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna means uh, Radha and Krishna, Radha and Krishna, they are together. And then Krishna, Krishna, Hare Hare means they are separated. And then again, we come Hare Ram, Hare Ram. So they are together and Ram, Ram, Hare Hare means Radha and Krishna are separated. So uh, here, Radha Rani, because it's Hara, we are taking the name with Ram. Would you like to say some words with that or Radharani because we always picture Radharani with Krishna but here again Hare Ram 
Hari Ram. So Radha Ram, Radha Ram, or Sita Ram. How how do we picture that? That was discussed in in the in I think it's in uh, Srimad Bhagavatam or it's in Chaitanya Charitamrita, where according to one's mood of uh, worship, Hari Ram could mean one of two things or three things. It could mean uh, uh, Sita Ram. Could mean uh, uh, um, let's see. It could all Rama could also mean Balaram with his consort Revati, Revati Raman. Or it could mean Krishna, who is Radha Raman. So the Brijabhasis, they they take the whole mantra as Radha and Krishna because they see the Hari Rama is uh, is is Raman. For Raman, remain says the. Uh, Radha Raman means uh, Krishna, who is Raman. His name is also Raman. And then you have Balaram, which is Revati Raman. You have Sita Ram. So some people meditate on or understand the chanting is in one of those three ways, depending on your mood of worship or your focus of worship. But for Gaudiya Vaishnavas, we see Hari Rama as Krishna also. Yes. Radhika Raman. Thank you. Thank you, Maharaj. Hmm. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Um, we accept my obeisances. All glories to Prabhupada. Just a, a question, um, maybe silly, but just on my mind. Is the mantra Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare? Is this is the mantra is Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram? Is Ram the same as Rama? Is a two syllable word the same as the one syllable word? So can you say Hare Ram as opposed to Hare Rama? I heard you had to say Rama. That's my question. Well, we heard the same thing as Srila Prabhupada did instruct one or two devotees that they should chant Rama when they chant Hari Rama because it is a thir it is a 32 syllable mantra and if you drop the A which any any short A can be dropped but in the mantra it will cut the mantra short so Prabhupada did instruct us to chant Hare Rama. Now, if you listen to Srila Prabhupada's chanting, sometimes he chants Hare Ram. So out of ecstasy, sometimes devotees chant Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Ram Hare Hare. So I've been struggling with that for years now, and I'm working on that daily, because for the first 40 years of my life, I chanted Hare Ram. Now I'm chanting Hari Rama and practicing, but I find by chanting Hari Rama, it brings greater attention to the chanting. That's what I found, being conscious of chanting Hari Rama. So I think, and it's the proper way to make it Hari Rama because that's the way it's written. Not to drop the A, but sometimes it happens. It's not an offense, but it's just just shortening the mantra, actually. So if you pray, and the, the, the Rama is not like the Krishna. It's Krishna, but it's Rama. Rama. You pull in the A, it's a guttural sound. So it's Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. It's a quick A. Whether you pull it in instead of expressing it outwardly. That's the actual pronunciation according to the, you know, 
according to the correct pronunciation. Mm -hmm. So, and you, yeah, I came across the statement by Srila Prabhupada a few years ago, and ever since then I've been working on trying, trying to switch my mood from Hari Ram to Hari Rama. So and I, I notice in my own struggles, I sometimes slip back to Hari Ram. But when I'm conscious, and then I chant Hari Rama, and I find that that helps to bring about a greater attention in the chanting also. And according to some devotees, and Srila Prabhupada did instruct uh, personally a few devotees that they should chant Hari Rama. And when they when we refer to the mantra, it's called 32 syllable mantra, and not uh, in not 28 syllables. <laughs> So give it a try. <laughs> I know my shade sometimes says when you get going fast and you're saying rum rum, it's like rum rum, like rum. So uh not it gets it gets a little skewed. Yeah, it does, but keep bringing it back to Rama. <laughs> Every time you become aware of it. If you're not conscious of what you're saying then you're not you're not you're not concentrating on the sound when you slip into ram then go back to rama thanks prabhuji for asking that question and thank you so much maharaj it's a very eye opening statement thank you You'll find different opinions, but this is, from what I know, this is what Prabhupada said. So I'm trying to follow that one. Many, many of us, we also do Ramo, Hare Ramo. It's like a Bengali accent. <laughs> Hare Ramo, Hare Ramo, 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 Hare Hare. So. Now, Prabhupada really got angry about that one. Okay. He, he, he shot it down immediately. He said, this Ramo will ruin everything. He said it's not a it's not a Bengali mantra, it's a Sanskrit mantra. Exactly. And so uh, there has been an effort to, to try to stop this Rama, but it's infiltrated into our society so strongly. I gave a class about a week ago in Bombay and I instructed all the devotees after I heard them chanting Rama because it's bogus and it's there's no allowance for Ramo. It's not allowed. It's just, it's Rama. Who is Ramo? Who, who, who the hell is that? You know, <laughs> what is he? Somebody's Italian barber or something, you know? It's Rama. Thank you. So, Thank you, Maharaj. Yeah, it, it's it's a deviation that's infiltrated into the society. It, it, it comes from the Beng, the Bengali, because the Bengalis have a tendency to change change the A to O's. It's true. Mm -hmm. So avoid that. If you like, I can send you the the text of Prabhupada this instructing um, Vishnu John Maharaj not to chant Ramo. Yes, Maharaj, do do send it to us so we can circulate it to people here. Yeah, because I would like many to of, many of us don't know. I'm trying to get devotees to become aware of that and stop it. Even big kirtan leaders chant Ramo, and sometimes you you get a mantra like Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hari Rama, Hari Ramo, Ram Ram, Hari Hari. So you get an O and an A and a Ram, and it's like it's not written like that. So, but Krishna, they say, well, you know, Krishna is Baba Hi Janardana. Bhavagrahi Janardana. 
Baba Grahi Janardana, that he takes what you intend rather than what you say. And that's true. But still, we have to follow the instructions of the spiritual master. <laughs> right. So what happens, Maharaj, when the same um, shloka, the mantra is written in Sanskrit or in Hindi or Devanagari? It's, so when we read, it's written like it's not in English, it's written Rama, R-A-M-A. But in Sanskrit, it's written Rama. So there is no, not another line after the Ma. So people are not pronouncing Rama. So the people of Indian origin, I don't know, I'm thinking. So it becomes Rama or Ramo, I don't know. So I don't know either. <laughs> so. It's okay. Yeah, leave your email. Leave your email address in the chat, and I'll send you this little dialogue. Yes, Maharaj, that'll be very effective. Thank you. I might have it, but I'm not sure. Jayanti Mataji, if you would like to go ahead and ask your question. Hare Krishna Maharaj. My, my question is, on this note, uh, the Gujaratis say Krishna instead of Krishna. So that should also make a big difference. What do you think, Maharaj? Prabhupada talks about that too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The thing is, we're followers of uh, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And he gave us the mantra. Uh, I, I missed you. Put that thing back in the chat. Uh, yeah. Uh, so we follow Lord Chaitanya. That's the thing. There's also in the in the man. Uh, um, there's also um, what is it? Um, in the scriptures, also it says. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari. So the scriptures also teach the Maha Mantra from that point. Nina, put your thing back in. I can, yeah. Chakrabarti, C H A C H A K R A. Oops, I lost it again. Barti, B-A-R-T-I? Yes, Maharaj, you got it. At yahoo.com. Yes, Maharaj, thank you so much. Nina underscore Chakrabarti at yahoo.com. Yeah, it's Nina at underscore Chakrabarti. Huh? Yes, Maharaj, it's an underscore. N-I-N-A underscore Chakra, you know the set of chakras? So C-H-A-K-R-A-B-A-R-T-I. I'm just trying to... Uh, that's Make Bengali, it is. isn't it? It is, it is, Maharaj. Yeah, okay. Um, so, uh, in that, in that uh, scriptural statement where the Rama, Hari Rama is first, Prabhupada said, yeah, that's fine. But Lord Chaitanya said, Hare Krishna first. So we are followers of Hare Krishna, so well. We will follow Lord Chaitanya, so therefore we chant Hare Krishna first. So despite all of the other ways that people approach the mantra and say the mantra, we have to follow Srila Prabhupada and Lord Chaitanya. That way we have a standard by which we can practice. Mm -hmm. If we want to include all of these other things, then we just, we'll, we'll just be you know, all over the place. So we have to follow in, in our, we follow our acharyas. The Ramanujas, they teach a certain way. The Mudvites, they cheat a certain way, you know. So the different sampradayas may teach a little bit different and change, give mantras a little bit different, but we have to follow our, our prescribed uh, acharyas, which is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who has given us the formula and Prabhupada is the latest link in that in that disciplic succession. Hare Krishna, thank you. I have a wonderful question on the chat. 
and is saying, Maharaj, how can I make my spouse chant? <laughs> That's my question too. Just don't give him anything to eat until he chants. <laughs> Say, if you want something to eat, you have to cook for yourself. I'm not cooking unless you chant Hare Krishna. I don't know if that'll work. <laughs> it may be. Yeah, we have to use sometimes the nuclear weapons in order to get some results here. <laughs> What do you think, Shamagori? Is that a good idea? Responding, yeah. Maharaj. And if spouse is not chanting, the we have to chant more extra rounds. Uh, I don't know who is asking question. Is Prabhuji or Mataji? Because it says iPod. <laughs> When they say spouse, I think they usually refer to the male species. Yeah, right? we we need to, you know, chant uh, extra rounds and pray that uh, the and also do the tulsi arti, tulsi puja, and pray to Mother Tulsi. Yeah. yeah. If the spouse is is a louse, drive him out of the house. You know. <laughs> <laughs> That's the funny answer, Maharaj. <laughs> okay, little bit of humor here. So the point is, yeah, that um, to get someone to chant is not so easy who has not doesn't understand the importance of chanting. So stay strict in your own practice and be an example. And whenever you find opportunities, try to encourage. But you can't force. Ultimately, people have to come by way of their own volition. There was uh, one quick question on the chat. Um, and Bhagavati Harini Mataji saying, Maharaj, if you're chanting and just listening to the Nama and not chanting by the heart or not doing it by heart, is that effective too? Um, there's something there, but when the heart's there, then it's bhakti. And when the heart's there, Krishna's there. So, but what does it mean by the heart? Is that calling out to Krishna, my dear Krishna, ayinanda tanuja kinkaram, patitam mam vishyame bhavam buddho, kripaya tavapara pankaja stita duli sadrisham vichintaya. This is the mood of chanting, O son of Maharaj Nanda Krishna, I am your internal servant. Somehow I've fallen into this ocean of birth and death. Please, please, the word please is there. Please pick me up and place me as one of the atoms at your lotus feet. So we're, the chanting is really begging the Lord to please pick us up from this material existence and give us shelter at his lotus feet. So if we can keep that conscious awareness of the mood and chant in that mood, then that is, that is proper chanting. We are in a helpless condition. We are surrounded by the material energy. Time is taking away our lifespan. We're always in a difficult situation. Kali Yuga has presented more and more ways that one can be destroyed in this age. So it's a very precarious existence in this material world. So one, when one who is aware of that will understand, I have to take shelter. And Krishna is my only, only he can protect me. Only he can save me. Only he can bring me to a better situation. So in that mood, we're calling out to Krishna for help. There is one quick question from um, Prabhuji. He's saying, Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Please share your experience on how to chant attentively. Well, there's many techniques that you can use. We spoke about the devotional aspect, which is the essence. 
that has to be there. Some of the techniques which in, enhance our the hearing process is described in different ways. One is to concentrate clearly on the first hare in the mantra. When you focus your consciousness on the first hare in the mantra, then it becomes more natural to hear the rest of the words of the mantra. So we be aware of Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Krishna. So that first Hare is more like a way to connect in a very uh, complete way with the sound vibration. It helps. And that has to be practiced also because the mind is chanchala, the mind is flickering. So focus on the hearing process. One of the things that you should avoid is uh, you should not be in a hurry to finish your prescribed rounds. You should not think of trying to beat the clock by chanting faster and faster so you can get done, so you can do something else. That's one of the ways to destroy japa is to try to uh, try to just try to finish. Another one of the things is distraction. One of the things I do is when I get up in the morning, I uh, usually turn on my phone and I listen to Srila Prabhupada's chanting the uh, Guru Vastakam, the uh, prayers to the spiritual master, the Mangalarti chant. After I do that and I do a few things, I get ready for chanting, I shut off my phone. Not put it on silent mode, I shut it off. And I leave it off through the whole Japa period. There is no messages I can hear coming through. There's no ideas that I'm gonna go check and see who's calling and who's not calling. Uh, it's like it doesn't, my phone does not exist. And then when I finish my rounds, and then maybe even a little bit later, I'll turn on the phone and then I'll give the phone the time that I need. So keep your phones off during your Japa period, not on a silent mode, but off. Yes, Maharaj, very true. Phone is making a big distraction. Yeah, and try to, and for another, that pointer, try to hear the first hare, it helps to connect with the sound vibration also. Offer prayers during the chanting, you can stop and just pray to the Lord. There's one prayer that we, we chant, O Vaishnava Thakur, O Srila Haridas Thakur, alone I have no hope to chant the holy names of Lord Hari. Please be merciful. And with a particle of faith, please give me the treasure of the holy name of Lord Sri Krishna. So that's a prayer that I recite. You, Bhakti Vinoda Kaur emphatically states that unless one prays for attentive japa, one cannot chant attentively. Thank you. Thank you so much, Maharaj, for answering all our questions. We have one very interesting question from Jyoti, Mah Mah uh, Jyoti Mataji. She's saying, Maharaj, how would I respect um, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu more? Because I'm way more attracted to Krishna, <laughs> Lord Krishna. Well, he's our, he is the incarnation in this age who has given us the process of self-realization. And he's more merciful than Krishna. Although he is Krishna, he is more merciful than Krishna. Even if Krishna made standards for, for, for progress in devotional service, Lord Chaitanya dropped all the standards, all the rules. He said, chant, dance, take prasadam. 
So Namo Mahabhadanaya Krishna Prema Padayate Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namadi Gauda Chuste Namahai. Namo Mahavandanaya, he's the most magnanimous manifestation of Sri Krishna. And he's come with the mercy of the holy name in this age, and he's distributing it anywhere and everywhere. He gave it even to Jagai and Madai, two criminals. <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj. Scarlet Mataji, did you have a question for His Holiness? Hare Krishna, yes, but I am very strange in my voice. Hare Krishna, accept my humble offense. Yes, that's all glories to Charakopat and all glories to you, to Your Holiness, and all glories to all uh, somebody. Yeah, I'm so sorry for my voice because I have had my uh, speech fastening that's why i i i sound very very strangely that's why i changed my mind but anyway uh i we had we had um, fasting yesterday we had uh, ekadashi yesterday and in that uh, i i studied and i learned uh, about uh prusha prusham shukta uh, that we have to chant the name of so I wonder why should we do that? Why not just do the Mahamantra all day? There is no statement anywhere about we have to push. The Purusha Shukta is a type of prayer. That's what that is. Those prayers are made, were made by the demigods in order to petition the Lord to come to the material world. So we're not we're not required to. I don't know where you read that because I don't know anywhere where it says we have to chant Purusha Shukta. These are just, these are sets of prayers that were offered to the Lord by the demigods when they wanted the Lord to incarnate when the earth was in trouble. Um, we don't chant the Purusha Shukta prayers. Okay. My next question. We chant I heard we chant Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sri Vasudhi Gaur Bhaktivinda at the beginning of our japa and then we begin our japa. Yes, and I do it uh, all the time. Uh, my next question, I heard that you can chant for your spouse or for your loved ones instead of them. Is that true? Can I uh, chant for my children, for instance? I have six children. Can I chant for them? Well, you can offer the results of your chanting to them as an offering, but that's up to the Lord to do what it, to do to give it or not give it. And you say, "My dear Lord, I want to chant for the benefit of these persons, but what kind of benefit do you want to give them? Just uh, to wake them up, just to wake them yeah. up. Yeah, that's that kind of benefit is the best benefit yeah. to get them aware of the importance of spiritual life. Yeah, we can pray for others, and it's recommended you do that. Thank you. There's one <clears throat> one question in chat box: How not to get scared of ghosts? And the person is saying, "I I am chant nudging the prayers." Who's that? The Shringalila asked that question. I don't know. Doesn't say any name. Nishrikalila, did you ask that question? Oh, Hare Krishna, I didn't. Somebody else asked. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I thought we were turning back the pages of time for a minute there. <laughs> uh, so what does it say? What's the question? Read it. The, the, the question is very simple. How not to be scared of ghosts? I mean, uh, the iPhone, uh, Prabhu Armata is saying, I pray to Narsimha Dev, but probably he, he or she is still scared of ghosts. So how not to be scared of them? Maybe it's just in the mind, I don't know. The body shouldn't be scared of anything. What this big of ghosts? <laughs> it says the loud chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra drives away ghosts, 
uh, politicians, and uh, what else? Uh, um, and thieves. <laughs> So if you chant loudly, the ghosts will go away. <laughs> yeah, when when we get scared, we should chant louder. Well, we should chant. Don't worry about getting scared. Just chant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The loud chanting does have an effect, though. Prabhupada says he uses himself as an example. Says when I get into an anxiety, I chant loudly. Lalitangi Mataji, would you like to go ahead and ask your question? Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept our humble obeisances. Our brothers to Srila Prabhupada, our brothers to your divine grace. Thank you so much, Maharaj, for your wonderful association so i was thinking about uh, chanting and and then uh, i heard so many uh, questions and your answers so suddenly last two days i'm feeling i'm not able to chant uh, properly i wouldn't call that taste or it, it looks very treacherous i i, I can't explain why but uh, each maha mantra it looks like crossing a mountain what did i do wrong uh, can you help troubleshoot yeah one of the things you can think of you say my dear lord the reason i can't chant is because i've committed to some offense to somebody so please help me understand and please allow me to um, beg forgiveness for any offenses i committed unknowingly and you can pray like that uh, my god sister had a similar experience and when she prayed like that she got a call from someone and said you know this lady is angry at you because you offended her child Ooh. so when she got the message then she understood how she made offense and then she apologized so pray obviously there's some offense that was committed uh, something you might have said or did or didn't do. So that's that's one aspect. Uh, are you getting enough rest? Yeah, that was not uh, proper also, but I think, uh, yeah, I would definitely look into this offenses. Yeah, that's one thing. And make sure you get enough rest, too. Thank so you can chat, chat with uh, more clarity. Mm -hmm. But the offenses, you know, that happens sometimes. We can't chat because of offenses. We are all struggling, Maharaj. What mm -hmm. should I say? <laughs> mm -hmm. It's a big struggle. Big struggle chanting is how to control mind, and there are so many distractions, and so much. Thank you, Maharaj. Um, Mataji, you have more questions? Yeah, you look hey, quite. Hey. You, you, Lalita, you look a little distressful. <laughs> I, never see, I always see you happy, but now you look like a different person. <laughs> what are you right? This morning, I had an experience too. I was chanting nicely, and I sat down to chant. And when I sat down, I fell asleep. And when I woke up, I couldn't chant properly after falling into this quick sleep. So then I got up and I was thinking what to do. 
So I said, all right, Krishna, I'm not going to go for any remedial measures here. I'm just going to chant. <laughs> so I just kept chanting, 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 chanting. It was hard. It was hard. It was difficult. But then after some time, it broke through. And then the mantra started to flow, and then it was a whole different experience. Sometimes if you fall asleep during your japa period and you wake up, your, your mind is fuzzy. And it's like beginning all over again, you know. Be careful of that. Don't fall asleep. But try that prayer and see what kind of results you get. Yes, Maharaj. Okay, uh, let's see. It's already been an hour and 20 minutes, 25 minutes. Um, I have a program tonight, a full program. And right now it's quarter after seven where I am in the evening. So I have to get ready for this program. So I think we need to end here. Yes, Maharaj.